My name is Jim Fleming, and this is Our Sunday School. Our Sunday School is part of Stewart Heights Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee. To prepare for this lesson, please go to OurSundaySchool.com for a copy of today's handout. Now, let's get to this week's lesson. Well, good morning and welcome to Our Sunday School class. Oh, all right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you pray. I'm kidding. No, it's, no, I'm glad everybody's here this morning. And uh, it's, now you still didn't tell me uh, what the is it because Tennessee beat Alabama yesterday? Third Saturday in October, Tennessee always plays. Okay, all right. Yeah, right. There's yeah, there's there's Tennessee fans reveling over the no. victory over uh, Alabama, the the slight victory over Alabama yesterday, but. Uh, yeah, I know. I just I can't handle that stuff. It stresses me out. <clears throat> Good morning. All right, well, let me open us up in prayer, and we'll get started this morning. God, we love you, and we thank you for just waking us up this morning and giving us an opportunity to uh, be a part of the good works that you prepared for each of our lives, God. And, and, and Lord, we just uh, come to you this morning thanking you for your love, Thanking you for your word. Uh, thanking you for the opportunity for us to be able to come and reflect upon your word and to listen to your word and just the gift of your word, God. It's uh, thank you so much. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you today to illuminate uh, our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Uh, speak through me today, Lord, and just pray that the only thing that that we see and focus on today is, is you and the truth that you provided for us in your word and in yourself. And um, we just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, uh, there's a passage of scripture that I, I guess it's been about the past month or so. I just keep kind of going back to, and it's, it's one of those to where uh, it's in the book of Hosea. And that's not a, a book that I regularly visit. Um, so it was one of those to where when I got to a verse that sometimes you just are going along and, and God just shines a light on something in, in Scripture that just uh, resonates with you and it, and it stays with you. And it was something that <clears throat> Israel was experiencing, and, and, but it's also something that I've experienced, and I believe that we experience, is, is when we look at the, the Old Testament to where uh, Israel came out of uh, Egypt and, and just the ups and downs of Israel to where it's just like, geez, what is wrong with these people? Why? How in the world? Because the, the things that God was, was doing were just, I mean, just right before their face. I mean, you, you can't deny <laughs> the waters being separated and and that type of thing you're just like wow if that was happening uh in my life that would i don't think it would have been any different for us because um hosea chapter 13 verses 1 through 6 uh, it says when the tribe of ephraim spoke the people shook with fear for that tribe was important in israel but the people of ephraim sinned by worshiping baal and thus sealed their destruction. Now they continue to sin by making silver idols, images skillfully shaped skillfully with human hands. Sacrifice to these, they cry, kiss the calf idols. Therefore they will disappear like the morning mist, like the dew in the morning sun, like the chaff blown by the wind, like smoke from a chimney. That's one of my favorite. I love word pictures. I'm just like, wow, that's poof, gone. Um, I have, verses 4 through 6 is, are good. It's, I have been the Lord your God ever since I brought you out of Egypt. You must acknowledge no God but me, for there is no other Savior. I took care of you in the wilderness, in that dry and thirsty land. And here's verse 6. It says, but when you had eaten and were satisfied, you became proud and forgot me. Whew. I can just tell you, when, when I read that, 
for the first time, it uh, was like getting hit and just knocked out by a two by four to where it's, it's that, what, what is it that causes us to just not wholeheartedly be dependent upon God? What is it that causes us to become complacent, to become sufficient? And, and it, it's, it's literally a lot more simple than we think it is to where it was just, he says, but when you had eaten and were satisfied, you became proud and forgot me. <laughs> I mean, the, the food wasn't something that they had prepared, that they had found, that they had forged. I mean, it was something that was wholeheartedly prepared for them by God. And they ate it, and they were full. And, and it brought comfort, and it brought satisfaction. But instead of it being turned outward towards Him, we just have a natural inclination as, as sinful uh, human beings that it turns inward to where we start to, to complain, going, you know, that was good, but I, do you think he could possibly do something different tomorrow? <laughs> Is there not something else that we can put on the menu? And, to where, and then when I move that fast forward to today, how easy is it to get stuck in uh, and become complacent to where we become proud because we're full? Um, there's, there's something about there's, when there's an urgency in our lives, we tend to cling more tightly to God in those times than when things uh, get settled in some. But that's, that's where um, faith and that's where our love for God really comes into play. And we'll get deeper into that as we go on to where um, the, the, the plan that God chose to, uh, for us to obey Him and for us to glorify Him is, is, is from a human perspective, is such an awkward plan to where He, he desires for it to be... <clears throat> we'll just, we're going to look primarily at, at God's love and our expression of God's love today to where... Um, that, that open-handed, uh, unconditionalness um, of God to where it's, if you love me, you'll obey me. To where that is something that is beautiful, but it is something that, it, that even to this day is foreign to me because um, just especially when I look as a parent, I'm like, oh, you will obey me. <laughs> and you're going to love me too. And to where I'm going to trust you to do it, but I'm also going to be hovering over you the whole time to make sure that you are. It's, it's something to where to, to, to experience that from God as something different to where you can see that in many ways you won't even be able to experience a true love if it's having to be forced out of, out of fear or, or anger in any way. It's, he, he doesn't want, he, has, he doesn't desire that. He desires for it to be pure um, <clears throat> and when we get to this place to where we're, we're satisfied with ourselves and we're not actively looking uh, to God, we're, we're complaining, we're, we, it, it's, it's a twofold thing. We, we don't openly just go, God, I'm just, a, there's just, just when we're complaining and not happy and when we're, they'll talk about having an attitude of gratitude. That's, that's something that's very legitimate. But it's something to where when we don't have an attitude of gratitude, it's, it's a very heavy indicator that, that things aren't right between us and God. Because our natural inclination is not to have an attitude of gratitude. It's to have an attitude of, I want more. It's just, even when I've gotten the best, I'm sitting there thinking, is there something better? Is the grass, I think the grass really is greener on that other hillside every single time. And... Um, and but thank God he's he's uh, he's given us his truth in the word. When we go down and we we can look at a, a modern where this type of just not being satisfied, becoming proud, and forgetting God. Second Timothy three one through seven talks a lot about um, what happens in us when in, and in in man when that happens. It says, but realize this that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, 
ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, I was kind of jokingly with myself. Uh, so uh, just saying, and, and that's just the things that are in us. <laughs> and it's just like, whoa, what did you just say? It's because each one of those things on that list, and this isn't something that's easy to say from a worldly standpoint, but from a, a Christian standpoint to say that, you know, I'm guilty of, of these things whether it be physically doing it or mentally thinking it. I mean, Jesus brought us to a different place to where all of these things are things that come out of my dissatisfaction with, with God, with, with uh, being content in, in myself to where they may not be as bold and just blatant to where you can just see it. But even if there's just a hint of it, it's, it's something that, that we can't allow to happen. So... It brings us to the point of saying, well, Lord, what in the world do we do? What, how can we uh, make sure that we can stay satisfied? Uh, how can we make sure that, that we don't even have the slightest sense of, of pride and, and independence apart from you? And how can we make sure that we never forget you throughout the day? And Jesus gave us a, a simple summary of basically, he says, everything can be wrapped up into these two things, guys. And he said in, in Luke 10, 27, he, and he answered and he says, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and with all of your mind. Those are, that's every aspect of who we are. Our, our heart, our soul, our strength, our mind. And then he wants us to love our neighbor as ourself. So it's one of these things to where God has called us to, to love him with everything and to boldly love others as we love ourselves because God has enabled us to. And we could stop there. And I think, I think we're guilty of just saying, okay, love God and love others. Let's, let's continue to break it down. How are we to love God? How are we to love others? Has he given us uh, an answer to this in his word? He has. He has. And let's just keep going. 1 Corinthians 13. This describes love. 4 through 8. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. And it is not jealous. It does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It doesn't seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. And then this is what it does, is it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. I don't think there's anyone in the room that would disagree with uh, any of, of those uh, statements about what love is. And each one of us um, have areas of love that are uh, easier for some of us to express than others. And there's some of those that are struggles for us to where it's just the, um, uh, some of it might be the arrogant part of it to where we tend to just be very proud of when we've done a great job. And, and there's just this, it's finding that balance of things that, that can be difficult to where um, just like when uh, we're, we're full and we've been fed by God and we become satisfied. It's, it's not much different to where I can go out and, and God can just be flowing through me and ministering 
to other people throughout the day. And guess what? I can even become satisfied just like the manna that he's just provided for me that had nothing to do with me. We, we, we can easily cross that, that wire to where I'm sitting here thinking, boy, look at this. I've somehow pre created good here. I've, I've been a part of that being created here. But when we think about it, it says the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is, is, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So when we see those things coming in and through our lives, especially through others, to where they're being blessed by these fruits of the Spirit, it's easy for us to flip that switch and, and start to be satisfied and saying, wow, I did that. And it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of mad airs. It's, it's very easy for me to, once again, when my stomach gets full, when my soul gets full, of just what God has done to flip that switch internally once again to where I'm saying, wow, I just, it's pr pretty amazing what I was, what happened back there. And what I, we, we have to fight that and we have to say, and God, it is absolutely amazing what you did in that, but more than that, what you did in me. And, and just to, to not rest in the fact that, um, like I said in that, that, that first passage of Scripture, when I was going down all those things, that um, there was a time in my life to where when Jesus would talk about the Pharisees and, and the, the, the religious leaders, I'd be like, yes, yes, to where I'm just like, yeah, they're awful. And to where as more time goes on, I'm just like, wow, that's, that's me. I, I hear traces of that in my thoughts. I hear traces of that in my heart. And I'm just like, wow. And, and it's so subtle. It's, it's so subtle to where, like I said, that, that passage in Hosea to where you just read it and you're thinking, wow, because when they had eaten and they were satisfied, they became proud and forgot me. That's, that's where we have a tendency, not only as individual believers, but as, as the, the state of the universal church today to be. We, we, have, we, we can get too comfortable in God's grace and... And, and mistake that for um, the fact that he is holy. And he said that I am holy, and therefore you are to be holy. And, and to not be satisfied with anything less than that, because he isn't. But yet we continue to, as, uh, to, to rest in that, and we can't. Because if we truly want this world to be changed, we have to never be satisfied with tolerating sin because just one sin prevents God from doing in us what he desires to do every day. Um, the, I love uh, John chapter 15, which y'all are probably shocked today that I wasn't uh, teaching on Psalms 139 or Ephesians 2.10 because, boy, those are my favorite. I, I literally could teach uh, or just share on those because... Uh, Jim and I were actually talking uh, on Wednesday, I think, about uh, we're going to try to plan a class soon to where we can talk about uh, formative, I don't know what word to use it, just verses or passages of Scripture that when it comes to your life, when you're sitting here talking about, you can just go, oh, yeah, I've got a Psalms 139 passage to where when you go back and look deep into your spiritual foundation, you go down in the basement and you're like, okay, yeah. This is where Psalms 139 comes in. And let me tell you how it got there. And you start to share about the, the valleys. And the, it, it's usually not the good times where those formative scriptures come in. It's, 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 that's the times where we, we understand how God uses those times to open our eyes, to, to show us just what is real. Because we, we so easily get satisfied with what isn't. Because we're, we're physical creatures. We, 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 we want to lean on our own understanding. It's just natural. It's what we do. All right, so uh, I've, I'd never uh, correlated 1 John 4, 7 through 21 with John chapter 15, which is, uh, I'm the vine, you are the branches. But as I'm going to read uh, 1 John 4, 7 through 21, and then I'm going to also go into... Uh, 
John 15, which is, uh, I'm the vine, you are the branches. But as I'm reading 1 John 4, 7 through 21, I want you to listen for, for, for wor- verbiage that is similar to um, I am the vine. It's uh, prepositions of, of in and, and, and abide and just those, uh, those, those uh, active words that are very similar. Um, so it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. By this, love is manifested in us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his Son to be the propitiation (laughs) of our sins. Uh, that's not a word we use, but boy, what a powerful word. It's, he sent his son to be the propitiation of our sin, our atonement. Um, the, the passage of Scripture that describes that best is Isaiah 53, 10 through 12, and it says, But the Lord was pleased to crush him, his son, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many. As he will bear their iniquities, therefore I will allot to him a portion with the great, and he will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Um, I never will forget in a class upstairs when um, that passage of Scripture was shared with the class. And there was a, a gentleman in there that I uh, was, he wasn't a regular, but even if he was, it doesn't matter. And uh, the speaker shared that verse, and the gentleman stood up almost. He was, didn't stand up, but he was like, he goes, no. He goes, this, what, what are you doing? What are you saying? You're saying this pleased God to crush his son? He's just like, and I understood. Because it was, once again, that was one of those passages where when that hit me for the first time and I read it properly, I was just like, this isn't right. This isn't, this can't be right. And, but when God looked at his son and and to say that he was pleased to crush him, that's when propitiation, full atonement. God is a holy God. Everything sinful must be atoned for, period. Every sinful thought, every sinful word, every sinful action. His holiness requires that the debt must be paid. What a heavy burden if that is our responsibility to have to do that. But, and, and none of us could even come close. But when Jesus, the God-man, came and became that, it pleased God because he's just like, finally, every ounce, every dot, every drop, and the most beautiful part of it is, is past sins, present sins, future sins. 100% just he can just unleash every ounce of it and only Jesus could take it that's it none of us have possessed the ability and it's done it's a complete transaction just amazing and and to realize that that it was all uh, because of me it's he poured himself out to death and he became numbered 
with the transgressors. I'm, I'm the transgressor. I was born into it. And, and yet, uh, he bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. That, that is what the propitiation is. Let's keep going. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love is perfected in us. No one has seen God at any time. But I can tell you that I see God, not physically, but I, I, see, his, uh, I see him working in and through people in our church and, and in my life on a regular basis. And that's where Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When we are loving others, that is when God is, is, is on grand display. That is not something that I can do well in myself or even truly love someone. It's, it's something that I do not possess apart from God, and, and you're the same. <clears throat> Let's finish up this chapter. Verse 13, it says, By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us his spirit. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. It, it can become repetitious, but it needs to become repetitious. He, he keeps completing, uh, giving these examples to us to, to help us to try to see and understand what really is going on and to, to get to the source of, of just this isn't about us. It's, it's all about him. Uh, by this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. So just even we can get so deceived that we are loving God and, and loving other people. Um, I, I remember at the church I grew up in, there were two sisters who literally lived across the street from each other. And they hadn't spoken in, in years. And yet they were extremely faithful, uh, churchgoers, uh, Sunday school, all this stuff. But it's, God makes it abundantly uh, clear that if someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, it's like, well, she doesn't hate her. She just, they're not talking. He's just like, no, it's, <laughs> that's not how this works. He's just like, when... When uh, Matthew 5 is where Jesus just flipped the whole table over to where he says, you know, you've been told that don't murder anyone. And it's just like, yeah, I'd heard that one, and you're right. And he says, but I'll tell you that you're wrong, and you're committing murder in your heart if you just have hatred towards someone. It's like, whoa, hey, hold up here. <laughs> to where he's just taking it to a whole new realm of he's, he's, he's called us to a whole different standard the standard we, is impossible for us to uh, reach on our own. <laughs> That's why this impossible standard is attainable because it can only be reached through Christ. And, and that's where, uh, once again, just in that one, there were so many analogies to where it was like, uh, uh, by this the love of God was manifested in us. It says, so that we might live through Him. And then it would go on further to say, by this we know that we abide in Him. And he in us, uh, because he has given us the gift of his spirit, God, God abides in the Son. 
And it says, and, and the one who abides in love abides in God. It's just this in and this out and this through and this thing to where then he gives us the picture of, of the I'm the vine, you are the branches. Uh, John 15, 1 through 17. And it says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And now it starts to sound strangely familiar to some of the, the, the words that we were hearing in, in uh, 1 John. It says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's an important point right there. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them up and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for slaves do not know what the, his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from the Father, I've made known to you. Whew, boy, that's a heavy, <laughs> heavy truth right there. Are y'all hearing that? No longer do I call you slaves. He doesn't force us to, to love and serve him out of fear. He doesn't force us to, to love and serve him out of, oh, oh Lord, I don't want to get you angry. It's, he wants us to love and serve him out of love and 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 when we do he says he says i've called you friends and it says for all the things that i've heard from the father i have made known to you dude i mean we're, we're able to go into the throne room of god and 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 pray and and be in his presence only for one reason is that uh, jesus that's it it's, it's not because of I am just, mm, somehow I'm, I'm holier than uh, I was yesterday. No. And then 16 and 70 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask in, ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. This I command you, that you love one another. It all goes full circle back to uh, what we were saying in, in the, uh, or Jesus was saying, is to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, all of our mind. So if I'm doing that, when does that mean that I'm loving God? It, every second of every day. When I'm driving my car and other people are, uh, trying to get me in the flesh, which is, uh, I can just uh, be prayed up and just specifically be praying because I know I'm getting ready to go driving. And it's, I don't struggle with it as much as Doug does, but, I, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's something to where I just never will forget as a kid in Disney. Uh, I think it was Goofy was behind the wheel and, uh, and he's driving and then all of a sudden it's just he transforms into this just 
high to where it just, I mean, when people are just being sinful people, imagine that in this world. People are acting like evil sinners that we are. Uh, it just to where, but when I'm looking at things rightly and I'm saying, what would Jesus do if he was driving? It's, I can just tell you, he wouldn't be, ah, eat that sucker. It's just, it's, no, it's just, no, it's just never anything like that. It's, it's something to where he would be the fruit. It would be what love was. It would just, and he's not me saying, oh, I remember you. I remember you. Yeah. It's, he's like, I could remember you, but I'm choosing not to because I'm not going to keep track of wrong suffered from where you cut me off and I hit that telephone pole and to where he, he doesn't hold it against them. He just loves. And what a foreign concept to me, even to this day, to where I'm just like, Lord, this is impossible. And he says, I know. I know it is. Apart from me, it is. And I'm just like, wow. Well, Lord, how do I get it? Abide in me. Take my yoke upon you. Regularly love me on a, on a regular basis and watch what's going to happen. And especially do it in the areas where you're the most fearful or you're the most angry. Just bring me there and, and let me show you what is possible apart from you. And that satisfaction that comes from being full, it becomes a distant memory when you start to experience what it's like to be in the center of God's will and where he's at. And it, and it just becomes something to where uh, getting in the word in the morning before you start your day isn't so much a chore as it once was, as it's become something to where uh, you, you, you have to force yourself to sleep in some mornings because you're so excited that you want to start. Is that every day? No, it's not every day. <laughs> there's, there's those rare occasions where I was like, oh, man, Lord, I want to pick up on this tomorrow. And, but it's just because let's all live in the fact of the reality that you're chosen. God chose you. Each person in this room, he chose you. And he appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. And that's the beautiful thing about love. It's eternal if it's, if it's God's love. It, the, the fruit of the Spirit, those are eternal fruits. They're, they're things that will not fade away. And that's where God just wants us to share Him. He is the fruit with, with the world. And, and then it just, uh, and, and the biggest thing that it ends with is that last one, is the biggest challenge that we have in our lives every day is not conquering our projects, not conquering uh, our job. It's, it's loving others. That's what God has called us to do. That's the only reason that we are ultimately here. And we need to actively be looking for opportunities to, to love and serve others through Him all throughout our day. And the most challenging place you will ever face that, I believe, is at home. It's just where uh, things are, are raw, they're, they're real, and you can't put your, your Christian face on like you do at church and and things to where it's just like uh, you might as well take your little mask off buddy i know you <laughs> it's just like huh and to where it's one of those to where uh you, you just it's it's the most it's a beautiful thing but it's also a difficult thing but even there that's where god wants to to say put me first and and let's let's watch uh, what only i can do all right let me pray us out of here god we love you we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for appointing us. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of your plan, Lord, to be a branch, to be an extension of you to the world. We, we thank you for allowing us to be able to experience you working in and through us, not only just as ourselves, Lord, but just to be able to experience and be a part of your body in, in actively loving and serving others. And, and ultimately, Lord, seeing others come to know you as a result of, of experiencing you in and through us. God, help us to encourage one another. Help us to challenge one another. And just more than anything, help us to love one another. We just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for engaging. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, YouTube channel, and weekly email. 
You can subscribe to all three of those at OurSundaySchool.com. Grace and peace to you.